Hi, this is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast, which is all about living your life as a global citizen. We really believe that whether you're traveling, whether you don't travel, whether you're at home and you wish you could travel, but you can't, that we can all strive to live our lives as a global citizen and to appreciate this great and wonderful world that we live in. You know, one of the one of my favorite places that I've been to is Tibet. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Tibet. First, I'm just going to back up for a minute and talk about my book I've written called The Bus on a Dusty Road, Life Lessons from Living in Asia. And the reason I'm going to mention it is because in there I have a chapter about an experience that I took driving on an army jeep. I am not kidding you. I was in an army jeep that didn't have any shocks. The door kept flying open, had no seatbelts, and we went 18 hours overland from Chengdu into Tibet and China. It was a fabulous trip. It was a dusty trip. I swear I got whiplash many times on these bumpity, bumpity roads, but it was really great to see Tibet and to see this part of Tibet. And this was an area of Tibet where very few foreigners have ever been able to really travel. That is why today I want to talk a little bit about Tibetan dogs. Because actually at the time, our tour guide was someone who took people into Tibet quite a bit to look for and to find Tibetan dogs in Tibet. If you don't know much about Tibetan dogs, or maybe you own a Tibetan dog and are just curious, they really have a fascinating history. I am personally a dog lover, and I at one time had five Tibetan Spaniels. I love Tibetan Spaniels. They are great dogs to have as a family pet. They're loyal, they're trustworthy, and sometimes they don't like strangers too much. But if you're looking for a great a great dog to be able to watch your house and be loyal to your family, it is the Tibetan Spaniel. I want to talk a little bit about Tibetan dogs. And, and I have a blog that I've written about 18 questions about the Tibetan Terrier dog breed answer. So today I'm going to talk about the Tibetan Terrier. And, you know, the first question is, is it actually a terrier? You know, this is sort of an interesting question because anybody that knows anything about Tibetan dogs knows that there's several types of Tibetan dogs. There's Tibetan Spaniels, Tibetan Terriers, Tibetan Lhasa Apsus. You know, there are all these different dogs. And these dogs traditionally, their belief is that they've lived in the monastery and they lived with the monks. And the Tibetan Spaniels are known to be sort of like the dogs that would sort of like they would warm the feet of the monks. They were kind of like inside the monastery more. And they were, you know, dogs that really, you know, were sort of inside the monastery. But the Tibetan Terrier is actually not a Tibetan breed by, you know, blood temperament or by job description. They actually got their name, which this is interesting, because they got their name in the 1800s and the um in the late 1800s and the 1900s, when some European travelers visited Tibet and they saw the Tibetan terrier dog breed in the Buddhist monasteries or out with the herders, because these dogs are actually, they're, they're traditionally the herding dogs. They go out with the Tibetans and they herd and they help them herd, you know, um, you know, some of their, you know, their goats, sheep, their yaks, the other things that they might herd. And, um, they thought, well, this dog looks like a terrier, so that's why they called it a Tibetan terrier. It was called a Tibetan terrier because they thought it looked like a terrier, not because it actually is a ter terrier breed. The Tibetan terrier is considered a non-sporting dog group. They are in the same group as several native Tibetan dog breeds, including the Lhasa Apsu and the Tibetan Spaniel. So, you know, this is where you know, Tibetan dogs get very, very interesting if you own one. Because even though they're considered to be very old dogs, and in fact, some of the most ancient dogs that have ever been around, they, they still are dogs that are still relatively new to the rest Western world. And that is because for a long time, the dogs were not allowed out of Tibet. They were considered to be such important dogs for the Tibetan people. Maybe some Europeans were given a dog as a gift and they brought the dog back to Europe. But, you know, generally speaking, they had they couldn't buy a dog. They would have to bring the dog back or be given a dog by, you know, by somebody would have had to give it to them. So that's why the Tibetan dogs are, you know, that's why they can be confusion exactly around like Tibetan terriers. Are they exactly a terrier? The next question is, are they considered to be holy dogs? They are known to be the holy dog of Tibet. 
For a long time, the Tibetan terriers were never sold, but only given as gifts. And that's what I mentioned before, that only a monk could be able to give the gift of the Tibetan terrier. And this gift was to help promote good fortune. You know, the Tibetan terrier sort of has a legend that goes with it. And this legend is tied to the Tibetan Buddhist monasteries. The Tibetan legend has it that Tibetan terriers were kept purebred for over 2,000 years. And for most of the time, they were never bought or sold, but only given away. So that's kind of like this little legend that they have, that they were, you know, they were protected, they were kept as purebreds, and they could never be bought or sold. Or even the Tibetan people couldn't buy or be able to buy or sell them. They could only be able to get them from the Tibetan monks as a good fortune. Are they, you know, are they considered a good luck charm? They are considered a good luck charm. So if you own a Tibetan terrier, considered to be a good luck charm. Their owners are considered to have good luck by owning a Tibetan terrier. They're considered to be a mascot, a watchdog, a herding dog, and a companion. But most important, in Tibet, they are considered to be part of the household. They are very much an important part of the household. You know, that is why the Tibetan dogs were so important you know, they first, they didn't come out of Tibet until in 1922. The first Tibetan litter was born outside Tibet in England in 1924. So you think about it, you know, for, you know, where Europe's had many other types of dogs, this is a relatively new breed for the Western world. It's only been in the Western world for just over a hundred years. And that was only one litter was in 1924. And so, you know, it's it's really not that common of a dog compared to many other dogs which have been around for quite a long time. The first Tibetan Terrier did not arrive in the United States until 1956. You know, and it was really in 1957 that the Tibetan Terrier Club of America was formed as some Tibetan Terriers began to arrive in the United States. And the the breed was not officially recognized as a breed by the American Kennel Club until 1973. So you think about that, you know, here you have a dog that for 2,000 years has lived in Tibet and has lived in the monasteries with the monks and the monks would only, um, you know, they couldn't be bought or sold. Even the Tibetan people wouldn't be able to buy or sell them. They had to be given to them by a monk. A monk would give it to them for good fortune you know, that they basically, these dogs did not even get become a recognized breed until 1973. So you see, you see exactly how uncommon these dogs are and why they're such a precious dog if you happen to own a Tibetan Terrier. You know, like, like many Tibetan dogs, the Tibetan Terrier, and I know this from owning a Tibetan Spaniel, they don't just bark at the wind. There's some dogs that, you know, every nook and cranny they bark at. These dogs do not just bark at the wind. They bark to alarm you. They are they have been bred and trained that way. So this could you know include like a visitor coming into your home that they don't know. They might bark at them because they're thinking this is intruding upon my space. This could be danger. They can be very protective of their owners and their households. And this is one of the reasons that makes them such an excellent watchdog is that if um, if somebody's coming in to your house that you, you don't know or they don't know them, they will alert you to that. And at the same time, they are not aggressive dogs. So no, don't need to worry that they will you know purposely hurt anyone. But they can be very standoffish and even aloof with strangers. So, you know, they may not be the, you know, they may not be the friendliest dog with strangers. They could be very aloof with them, especially if they don't know the strangers but they usually are not considered to be dangerous dogs. So if you have a Tibetan Terrier, you're interested in Tibetan dogs, I'm going to put a link to our blog below. But I really find that Tibetan dogs, it's such a fascinating story that aligns these two countries, Tibet, the Tibetan Terrier dogs, and and basically this whole other world that's out there where these dogs have been known to be like 2,000 years old and have all these wonderful legends about it. But it's only been since 1956 that the first one even came into the United States. And it was not even until 1973 that it was even recognized as a breed in the United States. And it was only in 1922 that the first one even came out of Tibet 
And the first litter was born in 1924, soon after that in England. So this is a relatively new breed. So if you happen to have a Tibetan Terrier, you have a very prized and important dog that's going to give you lots and lots of good luck and good fortune. This is Anita from Dusty Roads Podcast. We'll put some links in our description below. And um, we hope that you'll join with us in living your life as a global citizen. If we have a Tibetan Terrier, you will enjoy him and love him and take care of him or her. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate you, our listeners. We appreciate you being part of our community. And we'd like to thank you all because we know without you, this would not be possible. And thank you so much to our technical team for making this possible.